thank the Count Corla for selecting this issue for discussion today, which is very important uh, for me and uh, the farming community that I represent in uh, across County Limerick. And I want to say at the outset, um, Minister, that I and indeed my colleagues, we fully respect uh, the work of the Revenue Commissioners and indeed their independence, and they have uh, a difficult job to do, and they do it professionally. Um, but equally, I think we're fully within our rights to raise this issue and uh, to query their actions in this regard. Uh, the issue which we're discussing today, Minister, I think has to be taken in context against the backdrop that um, farm families have been experiencing over the last number of years, I'm sure which you were well aware of as a, a Minister of State in the Department of Finance. Milk prices and beef prices have been hugely suppressed over the last number of years, directly impacting on the margins and on the, uh, the uh, incomes of many, many farm families. And we know that there are thousands of them up and down the country that rely on the family income supplement to exist uh, hand to mouth day to day. We've had a reformed uh, common agricultural policy. We've had the ending of milk quotas. Uh, we have the uh, onset now of Brexit, which has brought huge uncertainty, which is impacting the agricultural uh, industry right around the country and has really worried farmers and their families to a huge extent. We also have uh, the fears and concerns which have been expressed by the farming communities in relation to uh, the international trade agreements which are being spoken about at the moment, uh, TTIP for example uh, and, and CETA, and the uncertainty that they may bring in terms of increased competition and uh, price suppression. Against the backdrop of that also, Minister, we have the uh, revelation recently to our spokesperson in Fianna Fáil here, our agricultural spokesperson, Charlie McConlogue, that just about 50% of the funding allocated this year under the Rural Development Programme has, yet, has been paid to the, our farming families out of a budget of $494 million across the various schemes, the AEOS, the GLAS, the uh, REP schemes, the uh, early retirement schemes for, for farmers. Uh, out of 494 million, only 256 million has been paid out to date. So all of that gives you the context within which farm families are operating. And then yesterday and today and in the last couple of days, we've had this bombshell from uh, revenue, uh, seeking to change the treatment of these patronage shares which uh, suppliers and members of Kerry Co-op have been in receipt of over the years. And, you know, people aren't trying to within the farming community, they're not trying to evade tax or to avoid tax. They're happy to pay tax, but they need to have a degree of certainty. And all along, these shares, as you know, were treated through the capital gains tax code. And now it seems to us that revenue have uh, switched tax and are now seeking to treat them under the income tax code and seeking to go back a number of years. So the, up, the, the, the upset that it has caused is immense. Uh, people are now being asked to find uh, significant sums of money to pay to revenue to meet this obligation at a time when they've already planned their next number of years in terms of cash flow management, uh, their commitments to uh, purchase of machinery, to the repayments of investment into their buildings, and generally their business planning. Farms, as you know, are like any other business, they have to be planned. So, um, Minister, what, what I would really like to get some clarity from you in relation to is, has this been a change of interpretation of the tax code by revenue? And why has it occurred now? And why, uh, why the change? Because people need to know why this change has happened. As my colleague has said, people have been through audits and they've had tax clearance given to them and they've, they've been okayed by the revenue commissioners. And, and secondly, it's also been said that the Kerry Group uh, should have had an obligation to their members in terms of informing them. Where, where does the Kerry Group stand in relation to all of this also? So if you could give us some clarity, and I think we need to be able to reassure our constituents uh, that this issue will be dealt with in a fair and uh, proportionate manner and not the type of language which we've seen in the correspondence which was threatening, which has been issued to these people. Thank you. And I'd like to thank deputies for raising this important matter. Uh, with regard to Deputy Brazel's proposal that I request the Revenue Chairman to appear before the Oireachtas Finance Committee, I would first note that it is a matter for the Finance Committee to set its own work agenda and to issue invitations accordingly, but I know that the Deputy will be doing that, I'm sure, uh, insofar as the appearance of the uh, Revenue Chairperson in front of the Finance Committee is concerned. But furthermore, 
All deputies will be aware that since the establishment of the Revenue Commissioners in 1923, successive governments and the Oireachtas have reaffirmed the principle of the independence of the Revenue Commissioners in their dealings with the tax affairs of any individual under tax and customs legislation. This independence is seen as critical to maintaining the integrity of the taxation system and forms a key pillar of revenues governance framework. I can, however, address the issue of the taxation of the shares received by Kerry Co-op suppliers. It's my understanding that these shares were received by milk suppliers as a consequence of and in proportion to the quantity of milk supplied. The shares are therefore payment received by the farmer for their milk supply and form part of the farmer's trading income for the relevant year. This is similar to the general tax treatment applying in respect of share-based remuneration for employees other than certain restrictive revenue-approved share schemes. Employees are liable to income tax, USC and PRSI on their share awards for similar reasons. The share award is linked to their work and is therefore treated as taxable employment income. To apply a different treatment to farmers who receive valuable shares as a result of their ongoing trading relationship with the cooperative would call into question the taxation of all forms of share-based remuneration received by employees or self-employed contractors in other sectors of the economy. It must be accepted that the patronage shares received by the co-op members are valuable assets. The shares can be sold for cash, they can be gifted or transferred to a new owner, and they convey voting and dividend rights on the shareholder. In many cases, the values received by farmers were considerable. For example, in the year 2013, the value received by farmers ranged from zero up to €39,330, with the average value received being approximately €4,860. The receipt of shares to this value would, I'm sure, have been disclosed by many farmers to their accountants, and deputies should be aware that the letters issued by Revenue this month have in the first instance been inquiries as to whether the values received have been included in their accounts. Farmers who are tax compliant and disclose the value received will therefore not be facing any additional income tax. Furthermore, it would be inequitable for those farmers who did correctly declare this income if Revenue did not follow up on those who did not. With regard to the questions raised by Deputy Collins and Moynihan, there has been no change in policy with regard to the imposition of income tax or capital gains tax to such awards. Capital gains tax applies to the growth in value of a capital asset. For example, where an individual sells a share that has grown in value since the time it was acquired, capital gains tax would apply on the increase in value. The matter at issue in this case is the original market value of the shares received by the farmers as a result of their trading relationship with the co-op. The shares were a form of payment received for the milk supplied by the farmers, and accordingly the value of the shares forms part of the trading income of the farmers for the relevant years. I am aware of the difficulties facing dairy farmers this year as a result of falls in milk prices, and I have taken a number of measures to assist such farmers, particularly in unusually poor trading years. Farmers may already elect for income averaging, which allows for them to average their income over a five-year period for the purposes of calculating taxable profits in order to smooth the volatility which can occur in farm incomes. And the Minister Noonan has now introduced in Budget 2017 an opt-out from the scheme to allow farmers experiencing a particularly difficult year to opt out of the scheme in that year, pay the tax liability for that year's profits alone, and then return to income averaging in the subsequent year. I would advise any farmers who have received this letter from Revenue to discuss it with their agents to ascertain if any additional liabilities are due, and if so, to make contact with the Revenue Commissioners. Thank you. Thanks, Ambassador uh, Corley. Um, and thank you, Minister, for your reply. Uh, Minister, just to pick up on uh, one particular sentence here in your, your, in your reply, you said, this is similar to the general tax treatment applied in respect of share-based remuneration for employees. And I, I think you, you will appreciate that uh, farmers are self-employed people, and there is uh, a distinction in our tax code between employees and self-employed people. Uh, and I think certainly that needs to be teased out a little bit further, and I'm sure revenue should look at that and see if we can um, try and resolve this issue that we're raising here today on the basis of that. Um, Secondly, I, I want to make the point that I'm sure Revenue have been aware of the issue of patronage shares in Kerry Co-op and uh, if it pertains in many of the other co-ops, possibly in Dairy Gold or, or in other co-ops uh, around the country. And they will have been in receipt of capital gains tax returns from people who sold uh, these patronage shares over the years. So Revenue will have processed uh, the sale of these shares already through uh, the capital gains tax um, uh, system. Uh, so they were aware of it, and why now are they turning around and telling us that, that, they, that they have to be treated uh, through the income tax 
uh, part of the code. That doesn't make sense, and I think uh, we deserve an explanation um, in relation to that. Um, also, I would ask, um, Minister, for uh, your offices are indeed the, the Revenue Commissioners, who I'm sure are tuned into this discussion that we're having, to uh, afford these people uh, a large degree of forbearance for all the reasons that I've outlined in my, uh, in my previous contribution, that the pressures that the farming uh, sector and farm families have experienced over the last number of years. And I think, uh, as I said, nobody is trying to evade or avoid tax. People are happy to meet their obligations, but they want this degree of fairness, recognising that they're self-employed people rather than employees, as you've outlined. Thank you very much, Lance Cancorla. And, and I very much appreciate the concerns that deputies have here on this issue, but I have to underline again the independence of the Revenue Commissioners. The Department of Finance is not across the individual tax affairs of, 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 of people in this state. And I would suggest, um, taking up Peter, uh, or Deputy Razzle's um, suggestion in terms of the Finance Committee having a look at this issue, so that this can be explained properly and fully by the Revenue Commissioners. There has been no change in policy here, and no one's operating on the assumption that someone may not be tax compliant. Insofar as the letters that were issued are concerned, the wording of the letter is a standard wording used by revenue for all forms of aspect queries. And if the shares were not mentioned during the calls of an audit, then they may not have been considered by the auditor. Um, it's not necessary to pay the liability within 21 days. It's necessary for farmers to assess their situation and make contact with revenue. Capital gains would have applied on the uplift in value of the shares. The case here relates to the original market value received, i.e. the base cost which could have been deductible uh, for CGT purposes. And this is a matter for revenue, but in general where a taxpayer cooperates with revenue and makes a voluntary disclosure, publication does not apply. And this is an issue, of course, faced by employees also, and in many cases they choose to set up a portion of shares in order to pay the tax due and hold the balance. Now, insofar as how revenue might collect any of the tax that is due, uh, revenue does offer a wide range of payments and phase payment options that will allow affected farmers to meet their income tax obligations in a manner that best suits their individual circumstances. Affected farmers are advised to engage with revenue early to address the issues raised. And again, that 21-day period, as is mentioned in the letter, is insofar as getting, making contact with revenue is concerned. It's not a, a demand for payment within 21 days. Uh, or, or, or even on the assumption that there is a liability. If you look at the wording of the letter, uh, it does state if, um, if there is a concern here or if there is something to be declared. In cases where a full disclosure was made in a tax return, it is unlikely then that any taxation or additional taxation is due. Insofar, insofar as why these shares are being treated as taxable income, um, they are patronage shares issued by a cooperative to members arising from the trading relationship between the member and the cooperative. So in effect, the greater the business links between the milk supplier and the co-op, the greater the benefit and therefore the profit received by the supplier by way of a, num a number of patronage shares issued by the co-op. I mean, I'm aware that this is a, an issue of concern, that there are details around this. Uh, I have more detailed notes here that I'd be happy to share with the deputies to help them better understand the approach from revenue insofar as the Department of Finance is concerned. But this is a matter for the revenue commissioners insofar as their operations are concerned in this area of patronage shares and the others that have just recently issued uh, to the farmers who are concerned.